Yeah, I said this earlier. Uh, definitely not uh, not the day that uh, I was expecting. Let me say that. Uh, definitely not the day I was expecting. Uh, of course, you made Diamond K in here, RadioFire.com, the Diamond K Show.com. And uh, as as this evening is is continuing to to move um we have uh, many projections in some key states still up for grabs not making calls on uh some of these key places that uh that we've been looking for looking at and um uh just trying to get information about um i was at the polls earlier today had a chance to speak with uh baltimore city councilman christopher burnett uh let's um go to that clip i was here 6 30 man setting up ready to vote but there was already people here when i pulled up um and the line was all the way around the corner by seven o'clock when the polls opened uh which is exciting to see i mean turnouts up all across the city we're breaking records every single day um and so i'm excited about the possibilities for uh the election the outcome um you know especially at the presidential level hopefully we can we'll be dumping trump soon uh, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out but either way i'm excited at how many first-time voters have come out uh, how many young people are showing up. Uh, it's it's incredible. Absolutely. I mean, between uh, the top of the ticket where we had the potential to elect a new mayor, council president, a new comptroller, and as many as five new council members, that's a lot of transition and a lot of new leadership stepping up, uh, which I think will absolutely reshape Baltimore. The other thing that I always like to talk about is the ballot questions. There's a lot of uh, charter reforms that will really structurally change the power dynamic between the city council and the mayor's office um, and at the state level as well uh, to whether that be more control over the budget or impeachment authority or equity. Uh, all of these things are on the ballot and are incredibly important for the voters and so to have this many people weigh in and, and, and having their, their voices heard is incredible. So we are the legislative branch of government uh, and so in the school we always learn about the, you know the executive uh, which in the local level would be your mayor uh, and your legislative branch which is that other branch that check and balance balance is uh, where we, we legislate. So we pass policy, we pass laws, um, we do the charter amendments, uh, and we handle constituent services. So, you know, what I tell people is, um, while I may not have the same level of power as the mayor, you're more likely to see me at the grocery store and able to work out issues, whether that be removing illegal dumping, getting streets resurfaced, helping people find homes, helping with our schools and making sure they got school supplies and everything else they need. So, um, you know, it's sort of, we, we do a lot, a lot of different things, but but the technical answer is we are that legislative branch. So anytime you see laws being passed or laws being considered or public hearings, those are all functions of the city council. Man, it, it, it is a, we are in a, a lifetime election right now. Uh, the election of our lifetime right now. I mean, there's so much at stake for the city of Baltimore, for the state of Maryland, and across our country. And people need to have their voice heard. They need to have a seat at the table, and they need to get involved with the voting process, the electoral process. And so I mentioned that the, it's important to consider candidates, but those ballot questions and those charter reforms are things that only come around every two years. And so when we talk about uh, investment in infrastructure, investment in schools. We, we, I was just talking to a lady uh, who lives in my district who was concerned about the pipes and, and, and all the construction work happening and, and where is that infrastructure, you know, what is the plan for it? And, you know, I was telling her, I was like, look, a lot of what you're uh, both excited to see, which is this investment in this part of the district, as well as future investments, those things are on the ballot. So even if you don't like the candidates, come for the ballot questions. Make your voice heard on those because ultimately we can't reform our government structurally. We can't change the outcomes of the cities if we're not showing up, right? Um, and so that's where, that's where it lands. That's why it's so important to me. As results are still coming in, uh, America is braced for what is to come. And the outcome may not be known for several days. It is, is definitely possible. Millions of voters braved their worries about COVID-19, about the coronavirus. Some stood in long lines. Some did not. 
uh, to turn out in person. Uh, 102 million Americans who voted days or weeks earlier, a record number that represented 73% of the total vote in 2016. So Donald Trump, Joe Biden, obviously locked in some tight races in the battleground states across the country as they conclude this epic campaign. Some questions, some realignments, some re-examining of the way this campaign was run. If Joe Biden is unsuccessful and Donald Trump wins, there's going to be a lot of second guessing. Maybe Bernie was the right person. Should Kamala Harris been added to the ticket? There are going to be those questions. Uh, if Donald Trump loses, he's going to talk about he was cheated. He's going to have a lot of things. Uh, but whoever the victor is, I think that there is definitely going to be a realignment in the losing party. A reshuffling of the deck. When we look back at what we know thus far, Biden picked up the first battleground state of the night, New Hampshire. Uh, it was a small prize that Trump tried to take from the Dems. But uh, races were too early to call in the really heavily contested areas, critical states on the map, Florida, North Carolina, Georgia, Pennsylvania. People have their eyes on that. Biden won California, which has the most electoral votes. Uh, and that was a predictable victory. We, we, we knew that was coming. But uh, Colorado, Virginia, two former battleground, battlegrounds have become some Democratic strongholds. Kansas, North Dakota went to Donald Trump. And, uh, you know, this, is, this has not been a landslide, considering the fact that Trump has lied, mishandled coronavirus, uh, just not really done anything in 2020 good. The, the race should be different. Polls and pollsters, let's just throw that stuff out the window. Nothing that the polls said is true. The, the, the pollsters, we need to get rid of that. We need, we need to get rid of that. Joe Biden watching from home with his family and close aides. Donald Trump watching the results with his group of allies at the White House in the, the residence part of the White House. Outside of the White House, the new anti-scaling fence, the only fence that Biden, uh, uh, the Trump campaign could put up was a fence around the White House. <laughs> it's, how crazy is that? Uh, but anyway, uh, in New York, Denver, workers boarded up businesses in case it got crazy. Which, it, which hopefully it will not. We are in the midst of the worst public health crisis, this pandemic. Trump's handling of it uh, was a big focus of 2020. What did Joe Biden promise? What, what did he bring by way of policy? Nothing. Uh, he played it safe, and playing it safe did not give him a landslide. He was against Trump, as many people were. But what was he for? I don't know. No one knows. <laughs> no one knows. Uh, I think that the best way to fight a right-wing populist, which Donald Trump is, is a left-wing populist. Playing the, you know, get things back to the way they used to be card, and, and and putting things straight down the middle 
normally will not work. It's possible that Joe Biden squeaks out a victory here. It's also possible that Donald Trump squeaks out a victory here. And there's no reason that we should be in a situation that Donald Trump, after his handling of the coronavirus, should even have a chance to win. The Democratic Party has to reevaluate the way they're handling things. They have to reevaluate a lot of things. There needs to be some changes in the Democratic apparatus, the leadership, the behind the scenes stuff, no matter how this goes, because there's no reason that it should even be close. I mean, Trump didn't even try to win, and he's still in the in the running. So whether or not Joe Biden wins, and I hope that he does, but if he does not, if he does not, I don't know what the future of the Democratic Party is. I, I, I really don't know. Earlier, Trump said winning is easy for him. Losing is never easy. Not for me, it's not. I mean, just listen to how he talks. Listen to how he talks. Um, cybersecurity agency at um, Homeland Security said that there was no outward signs this afternoon of any malicious activities. That's good. That's good. So um, let's look at some of these races in Maryland. Uh, and I don't think, as far as Maryland... I don't think that there were too many surprises. I don't think there was any surprises, really. In this election of our lifetime, Maryland pretty much held up the way that it should. We had uh, a lot of races to look at, a lot of initiatives across the country, the future of America hangs in the balance. Hangs in the balance. A lot of people came out to vote. Uh, and I'm talking about the Democrats and Democratic Party. I did have a chance to speak with the chair of the Maryland Democratic Party uh, today. Let's take a look. I'm Yvette Lewis, and I'm the chair of the Maryland Democratic Party. Well, it's important to vote because we don't need to be passive consumers of our democracy. We need to be active participants. And the only way we can bring about the change that we feel is necessary to make our lives better is if we get out and vote. So today is a perfect day to do that. If you're not registered to vote, you can register today and vote at the same time. Um, you can go to all of your polling places. Go to IWillVote.com. If you have questions about where your polling place is or what you're supposed to do, if you are in line at 8 o'clock when the polls close, you can still vote because if you're in line, you will still be allowed to vote. So the only way you have a voice in the direction of your life, your community, your state, your country is if you get out and vote. So it's very important. Well, I heard someone say the other day, which I like a lot, I want them to stand in line in defiance and with dignity because no one can take away your right to vote. You're a registered voter. You stand there and you vote. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. I spoke earlier about Baltimore not having too many surprises in the races in Baltimore. Uh, Brandon Scott, of course, elected mayor, Baltimore, heavily favored. He said that being elected mayor is the honor of a lifetime, and I could not have done it without you. Thank you to all the volunteers and supporters. Most of all, thank you to the voters of Baltimore. Tonight, we embark on a new way forward in the city together. Uh, Brandon Scott becoming the mayor-elect of Baltimore City. And um, I, I, he, was the, he was the right choice. He was the, he was the right choice. My uh, humble opinion 
<laughs> That's a humble, uh, humble opinion. Uh, also today, I had the chance to speak with Senator Chris Van Hollens. Go to that clip. Chris Van Hollen, I represent Maryland in the United States Senate. This is the moment where every citizen has a chance to say what direction they want our country to go. And this is your voice. Uh, I hope everybody will get out and use their voice uh, by casting uh, their vote. And people have in Maryland until 8 o'clock tonight uh, to do that. Yes, this is certainly the most important election in my lifetime, and I've been through many elections. Uh, we are at a moment of reckoning uh, in this country because we have somebody in the White House, Donald Trump, who for four years has tried to divide America against itself, pitting people against one another based on race or religion or ethnicity. And we need to come together as a country. We have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do to move forward, to make sure we build that more perfect union. Come a long way, but we got a long way ahead. And Donald Trump is just determined to drag us backwards. That's why I'm out here supporting Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. We can do a full recap. Uh, in the AM, I guess we find out, uh, get a get a better idea of uh, the way this presidency is, is going to look. But another race that I talked about frequently, uh, and that was the U.S. House in Maryland's seventh congressional district. Kwasi and Fume uh, soundly defeating Kimberly Clasic with all the money that she raised. All the big dollars, Trump support meant nothing. Uh, it did raise her profile, uh, but that race did not go the way the Republicans wanted it to go. Uh, but let me also say the race in South Carolina, all the money that was raised by Jamie Harrison, that race did not go uh, the way that the Democrats wanted it to go. And uh, unfortunately, Lindsey Graham, the uh, projected winner in the South Carolina Senate race, incumbent, um, is expected to fend off this challenge by Jamie Harrison uh, and secure his fourth term in Senate. So uh, the polling here again. <clears throat> the polling suggested a tight race where the combined money that was raised was over $200 million. But Lindsey Graham winning re-election and, um, you know, it is the most expensive campaign <clears throat> in American history. And, uh, Wow. Harrison raised $57 million in the third quarter alone. What, when you have these races and there's so much time and effort <clears throat> focused on raising money outside of the, the voting block, I think that sometimes people get a false sense of where things really stand. And that was the case with Kimberly Clasic. That was the case with Jamie Harris. Uh, and one thing is for sure. Lindsey Graham is not going to shut up for a while. Man. Man. Not not happy about that one. I, I said this at the, the uh, top of the hour that... This day did not go the way that Democrats were hoping. This day has not gone that that way at all. Man. <clears throat> uh, of course, just tune in. You may dominate in here. Radiofire.com, the show.com. It has been one of those evenings. And uh, I will be back. 
tomorrow to look more at the races. We're going to have a clearer picture in the morning. We may not know the winner of the presidency in the morning. It may take a few more days, but we may know in the morning. It just, I don't know. Um, so much out there. The path to 270 is, um, is, is, is a tight race. It's a tight race in these battleground states. It's a tight race. All right. So uh, we'll be back tomorrow. You man, Dami K. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the share button. See you.